Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Her Creative Freedom Podcast. I am very excited to record this podcast today because Steve and I are here to talk about the first trip that we've taken together, the first two weeks in the van together. It um, We have lots of stories to tell. If you are listening on just the podcast today, we do have a video going as well for my YouTube channel. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel as well. You can find the link to my channel in the description of this podcast episode. So today is the last day of our trip and we go home after this podcast. So everything that we are about to talk about is completely fresh as we can remember it to be. We do have notes in front of us, just make sure we don't forget anything because right from the beginning, right, the first week of our trip, we experienced a lot in one go. We pretty much tested everything we have in this van to find out that it's broken and then it can be fixed. So we have lots of stories to tell. So thanks for joining me on this episode, Steve. Thank you for having me on the trip. Okay, so let's get started with departure day departure day was a very uncertain day oh my gosh yeah see like i forget until we talk about mm -hmm. it um yeah we we basically got the van and then we were supposed to leave the next day which was stressful for me because i had again story of my life i'd had an expectation of how i wanted the van to look before we went long story short we basically i spent the entire day getting it ready we were going to leave that morning at like 9 a.m and mm -hmm. ended up leaving at like 4 35 o'clock p.m on the day of departure but i would i'm glad that we did it that way instead of leaving in the morning and not being fully set up because you were still oh working, yeah you were still working on set up stuff right up until the point we left yeah but that's okay so yeah we we knew we had a six hour drive ahead of us so we left from edmonton and we're driving six hours to golden to stay the night in golden and mm -hmm. we got to golden around like midnight yeah it was pitch black setting up. We had no idea where we were staying. We were going up this like log road for a very long time and we didn't know where we were until the next morning, which was honestly beautiful. But yeah, it was quite the adventure at first for sure. The next morning we got, we stayed in Golden. Tell me if I'm getting ahead of myself. No, too. no, I'll keep you on track. <laughs> um, We got to Golden, went to bed, woke up. Coffee was the first thing that we usually do. Opening morning. up the van door was the first thing I remember. And when we went to bed, it was pitch black. Couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And then that next morning, seeing the mountains backdrop and you've got the drone footage of it, but like the mountains backdrop with the fog rolling across. So much fog. Something out of a movie. And that previous night, we had no idea that where we were staying was so picturesque. And very open. Yeah. We were like surrounded by trees, but it was beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was amazing. It was a really good first stop. And I'll have all this information on my website and also on my Instagram. So you can find the locations where we slept mm -hmm. on my social media. So the first things first, we'll basically talk about the entire trip, but I really want to emphasize on the things that we experienced that weren't bad, just like the fire alarm going off <laughs> and the car breaking down. And we'll we'll get into all of that. So the morning we woke up in Golden, we went to make coffee. The collapsible kettle that I have does not have an automatic off button when it's when the water is boiled. So we just like let it go and I didn't know that at the time. So it was like boiling and boiling and like coming out of the kettle and I quickly shut it off, but it did set off the fire alarm. So the fire alarm works. We learned very quickly <laughs> that the fire alarm on my roof works, which is always a good feeling to have um, that it was installed. A little so shocking that, though. Yeah, it was a little shocking. Very <laughs> scary. Yeah, we got up in Golden and then continued mm -hmm. our trip and and when did we, we went, we went from, to straight from Golden to Kelowna to Kelowna. So we were in Kelowna for a couple days. Uh, Kelowna, we were excited cause we have an, I have an induction stove for the van and that's what we were going to use to cook all of our food, have hot meals. It was going to be great. Save money on meals for dinner, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And we went to go use the stove and it didn't work. It said it was working, but it wasn't heating up. It just like, wasn't working. Yeah. At the state of it is right now. It, it turns on, it registers that it's working, but when you put the magnetic pan or pot onto it, it just won't heat up. It won't heat up. So We don't know if it's a power issue or if it's a stove issue, but... Yeah, and a lot of people that live in a van that I personally know don't use induction stove. I do know people that have, though, and it worked for them, so I bought a similar one that I know has been used in a van before. So I don't know why it's not working because I bought what I thought was correct for power and all that stuff, but it's not working. So it could be a power thing. I'm not sure, but we'll figure that out. So basically now knowing very early on in our trip that we don't have a stove to cook hot meals, we did eat out a couple times. Um, 
by choice though we wanted to we wanted to experience vegan restaurant in, BC. in the area yeah and other times we ate a ton of veggies i mean thank god we're vegan that helped but eating salads every day stir fries every day and we had our oatmeal and stuff in the morning, so... We got we got by quite well, but it would have been nice. Like, a luxury item would have been the stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't like we got by and struggled or suffered through no. it. Like, it was totally it was enjoyable. Fun. It was fine. Again, thank God that we're vegan because having to, like, buy meat every other day because yeah. that's a lot of people's main source of protein. protein. It would have been costly and just, like, super inconvenient. But, yeah, so that always helped. Okay, the drone. Ugh. Okay, well... Can we go into the sleep spot first for Kelowna? Because, like, that was... If we're going order of events, that sleep spot was pretty damn cool. Yeah, you can talk about that. <laughs> uh, so, on iOverlander, we were kind of just finding pins. And the golden pin was, like, 100%. It was amazing, and it was everything we wanted it to be. And we went to Kelowna. There was really no good parking within East Kelowna or West Kelowna. That's free. That's free. Yeah. It was always in a Walmart parking lot or a Save on Foods parking lot. So... The one pin that we found was just outside of West Kelowna in like a hilly region and it was beautiful. Like when you drive up, you kind of have no idea where you're going. You would never find it by accident because it was like through a construction site and then up through a logging road, bypass some residential areas. Yeah. And then we just came into this clearing where the trees were and uh, there were some other van lifers and it was- Lots of dirt biking. Lot of, lots of dirt biking and it was just a, a nice open a treat area where we could just Yeah, it was a shop. nice open space in the woods, but for those who don't know what iOverlander is. It's basically an app that you can download on your phone that gives you, people will go and put like a pin at a location that they've stayed at overnight or not overnight. Um, so when you go on there, you can go on the map, search the area in the world that you're living in or you're going to, and it will pop up apps or um, pins on the map of whether it's overnight parking, what kind of overnight parking, um, maybe you can't park there overnight and it'll give you reviews and photos. It's so informative and that is where we checked like 98% of the time where we were sleeping. So it's it's an incredible app for people who live in a van or who just want to go somewhere remote and you don't want to stay in a campground or you don't want to pay for mm -hmm. overnight stay anywhere. It's, it's a very, very useful app. So if I can, I'll put the link link to the app for your phone right there and you can check it out but i highly recommend using that for sure even i this morning i told you i'll never pay for camping parking again like this is so beautiful and so off off the map that uh, you just have to experience it yeah it's really really great so that's something that you can always utilize so yeah we stayed in golden and mm -hmm. then sorry in Kelowna, where we stayed in Kelowna was that the drone yep. situation yes yeah, so that next morning when we woke up we it... were going for a walk and this was the most devastating thing of my trip at the beginning of my trip but so we have a drone and we wanted to fly it pretty much in every destination we slept at we wanted to fly the drone just to kind of get footage of all the locations that we were at i'm a newbie when it comes to maneuvering a drone and i was doing quite well mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, i got a little bit overconfident i'm gonna say and we were flying the drone on a just like a walking path a bunch of trees were around us of course because we were in a treed area and I was filming the drone kind of walking with us, but it was behind me. So I was watching the drone camera on my phone, on my remote control, but I wasn't actually looking at the drone device behind me until it flew or I flew it right into a tree mm -hmm. and it got muffled into a bunch of tree branches and then fell 15 feet onto the ground. Yeah. So now we have a very broken drone that we thought we could fix. Well, at first it just felt like, or it looked like a piece of the plastic had chipped off, which yeah. you were upset about, but I'm like, okay, it's a minor defect. Uh, and then we realized the gimbal was broken and that was the devastating part. Yeah, because... You can't film footage. Yeah, you just can't use the camera if the gimbal's broken because it was lopsided at first and that was fine, but then it like got stuck and it just like wasn't working. So I would say the first devastating thing about the trip was the drone. I was so upset because there was so much in my brain that I wanted to capture on this drone. The beautiful places in the earth that we were going to be staying around and on and in. So that was, that was, that was the first thing. That was in Kelowna. From Kelowna, we went to Vancouver. Well, before we go to Vancouver... Um, showering at a gym, that experience. 
Yeah, that was Kelowna, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's actually really good information. I was with Good Life for many, many, many years um, and loved the gym. Nothing. There's nothing bad about Good Life to say, per se. Um, but Good Life memberships are generally regional, like per city, per province. You can get Canada. Is Good Life even in the States? I think it's a Canadian company, but I could be wrong. I think it's a Canadian company too, but if anyone knows different, please let us know. So I was with Good Life for a while, and then I canceled the membership when the pandemic happened. Now, I, and along with Steve, is with Anytime Fitness, yeah. and the huge benefit when I was kind of like deciding, do I want to cancel Good Life? Do I want to go with Anytime Fitness? Because I've known Good Life forever. Um, is that Anytime Fitness, first of all, is cheaper per month, also nationwide. So whether you're in Canada or you're in the States, you can go to this gym wherever. And it's not specifically to your city or your region or your province. You can use that one membership that's like 40 bucks yeah. a month. We should be sponsored by them. Seriously, sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, it's like $40 a month. It's nationwide. And a lot of times that is, it's a 24-hour gym. So you can go in at any time to take a nice hot shower. Generally, they are very clean washrooms. Yeah. And if you get lucky, you can sleep in the parking lot. That really depends on where you are for sure. But we... They don't have, like, on all their reviews, they don't have a set policy around overnight parking. So it's kind of a gray area. As long as you're respectful and you only stay a night, I think it's yeah. going to be fine. I also just think it's depending on, like, where you are in the city. Like, Vancouver, Anytime Fitness, like... There was no parking lots. No. no. There was no parking lot that was going to allow you to stay overnight, whether you are a gym membership member or not. Yeah. Um... But yeah, in Kelowna, it was nice to be able to stay in the parking lot, have a shower. We also did work out and they have Wi-Fi if you're a member. So if it's decent Wi-Fi, we could sit in the van and do some work. Uh, other places were not so great, but that is an option if you mm -hmm. need Wi-Fi, want to work out, want to have a hot shower, want to sleep. It's literally perfect. The gym was like a highlight because just that, that refresh before getting back on the road was was amazing yeah like we have a portable shower here we have the wilderness to use the washroom we also have a little bit of a mini porta potty to use if we wanted to but to have a hot shower where i mean water's unlimited but we respect that as well for sure and do not take it for granted anyway it was really nice 100%. so yeah that was that was really good to do in Kelowna before we got onto the road tucker for tested the shower in Kelowna as well that wasn't Kelowna. that was wasn't nope okay Nope, that was Vancouver Island, but we'll get there. Yep. So from Kelowna, we went to Vancouver. Yep. Uh, and Vancouver was amazing. The drive in Vancouver was amazing. So incredibly beautiful. The biggest thing to note... For the, are we on Vancouver Island now? We're in Vancouver. Yeah, so we went from Kelowna to Vancouver straight to the ferry. So we didn't actually stay in Vancouver just yet, but we will definitely touch on that. So we went straight to the ferry to go to Nanaimo. We stayed overnight. Gosh, I don't even remember where in Nanaimo. Cause... Uh, truck stop, or just like the overnight stop. Oh, the rest stop, the rest right. Stop. So when we got to Nanaimo, we were, I was driving. I don't even, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> this police officer on the side of the road he came out of nowhere. On. He must have had binoculars. But anyways, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but I did get an over $300 ticket. And let me tell you, if you're in Albertan or not from BC and you get a ticket, payment process is quite confusing confusing but like kind of inconvenient when you're in alberta and you get a ticket you can go online and pay it or go to any registry maybe it was just like the type no because it was a it was a licensing ticket yeah so you have to go to this building you can't pay in person it's it's by mail or in person and it was just like a very inconvenient situation but without going into detail it was a learning experience for me we take it as yeah. a sign of that 300 dollar ticket could prevent some negative occurrence later on in, in the in the future it was either yeah that ticket or something bad happened in the future so exactly so don't don't speed everyone go the speed limit 100 so yeah that was an unexpected purchase when you are on the road living in a van and you're like i'm gonna save money it's just like a very inconvenient purchase <laughs> and yeah so just make good choices when you're driving yeah so then we stayed in anima one night and then made our way to eucalypt i'm not gonna say that Euclid, right eucalypt yuki Apparently, that's what the cool people say. Hopefully, that's right, because I don't want to offend anyone. But Yuki, Tofino, we were going to the island. Our final destination was Tofino, Vancouver Island, Yuki, that area. So, we knew that we were going to be getting into that area at night quite late. 
Um, but again, we looked on iOverlander to find a logging road. I'm yeah, sorry. it was just like a service road. It was a service road, but it was very popular. Actually, this wonderful couple on my Instagram who also live in their van with their dog told me about this location. So, uh, yeah, we took it up and it was awesome. It was awesome because it was friendly for yeah. vans. It wasn't awesome because the const- logging and construction trucks. Yeah. Do you want to explain that situation? So it's, it's a gray area. The logging road is crown land. So nobody owns it. It's close to a native reserve and it's also very popular for overnight stairs and nobody really owns the area. So the logging trucks that were coming through at 7 a.m. were upset because they have all these vans parked on the side of the road. Yeah. And so they were ripping down this gravel road, kicking up all these dirt, all this dirt, all the rocks, and just waking everybody up super early. Uh, And you could just tell they were frustrated that we were there. But again, it's Crown Land, so nobody really owns it. And apparently from people that have stayed there more than once had told us that it's been going on for about a year where you are allowed to stay there, but the construction workers... Make your life a little more difficult. Do not like it. So when I was outside of the van the next morning, I was literally watching like bucket trucks drive by, put their bucket down on the gravel road just to like cause chaos in the air essentially and make their way. Or they like these, they're like huge, huge construction, like pickup trucks. They're like, they carry rocks. So they're huge. Yeah. They're very big construction trucks and they just rip past you like when, because we got there when it was pitch black, we parked on as far on the side of the road as possible. But every time a car went by, I like cringed and I was like, please don't hit us. Like that was the most unrestful sleep I've, I had on this trip because I had this eerie feeling every time somebody drove by that we, we were going to get, get hit. hit. But because thankfully we didn't yes, get hit. <laughs> we thought that they weren't going to see the car that night before we like went to bed. I had to pee. So I went outside, did my thing. And I saw that my van lights were on the like very dim, dim lights. And I was like, that's kind of weird, but they must've come on because I opened the sliding door and they'll just turn off when I go back in. So the next morning we learned that we saved our life because, because nobody hit us because nobody hit us and nobody hit us because they saw us because I left the lights on, left the exterior lights on so the lights that i thought i saw or that i thought were on because of the sliding door were actually on because i just forgot to turn the lights off in general which means we went to start the van to leave and the van was completely dead (sighs) i'm thankful for the culture and around van lifers because they were all very helpful we knocked on two different vans one to our front one to our back it was three three the other guy didn't answer so. no because it was the guy in front of us the okay. guy behind us and then i walked to get the yes the cable cords no so the battery was dead we asked people to help us i do have and this is on my website as well and i still recommend getting this well i do recommend getting something of this but i have like a, a booster pack. a booster pack and i highly recommend one especially if we were stranded and nobody was near us like that would be so handy so get a booster pack for sure i do have one the issue is that my cables are a little bit short and generally in a car actually this would not be a problem because when you boost a car it's you know positive and negative negative on your battery i don't i don't even know why i don't know this already before we even started this journey because this is my van and whatever but you learn as you go yeah kind of transits thing. the battery is located under the under the driver's seat which again i feel like i should have known but i didn't know that so the battery of a transit at least mine is under the driver's seat your positive and negative are still under your front hood but positive is like on one end and negative is on the complete opposite other so the issue with that is my cable cords did not reach positive and negative so yeah. then we were like now what what do we do now i will put um something on my instagram and my website about exactly where the positive negative is even if it's the link to the youtube channel that we the video that that we watched that saved our (laughs) lives because it was so helpful but it's definitely something to take note of if you don't already know and you have a transit whether a 2020 and up is the same as later versions or whatever i don't know but i'm gonna make sure that in the description of this episode and my youtube video it's there so, because, yeah, it was in, really helpful. In layman's terms, the, the positive is still a red port in the center underneath the hood, but the negative is just a bare piece of grounding metal on the r- extreme right-hand side of the hood, like yeah. where the hood ends. 
So you would have never, like, we had three different guys yeah. looking at it and we're all scratching our heads saying, where is the negative? Yeah, and we found what we needed to know out by YouTube. And typically, you can ground a battery to any metal surface. The instruction manual that we have in the van mm-hmm. said, do not do any other grounding surface, but Did that it really? Port. Yeah. That's why I was like, uh, the gentleman who stopped, Chris, shout out to Chris. I didn't us, know that. Yeah, he's like, you can just ground it to the hood, but in the instruction manual, I'm it so says, glad do we not didn't. ground it. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't do that then because that would have been terrifying. So we... Long story short we got a set of we got cables. cables and helped us for sure and now i do have a solution if i'm by myself to boost my my battery chris was from chilliwack and garrett and his girlfriend we don't remember but i appreciated their help yeah they were really nice kind people Good they karma. were really nice yeah and then that pretty much brings us into our destination when we went to yuki um cute a very cute community yep. small thousand people yeah, um, but it was really cute into a cafe. It was really nice. They have a harbor, which is beautiful. Oh, yeah, and Nanaimo's harbor is also very beautiful. To walk around there and, and the seawall, I guess we'll call it, yep. was was outstandingly beautiful. Reminded so, you of Nova Scotia. Yeah, it totally does. And because I grew up there, it was like going back to Halifax Harbor. And just that smell of the air with the sea uh, seawater, oh my gosh, salt water, mm-hmm. and seeing all the starfish and all the stuff, it was really cute. So... Nanaimo was fun. And then after Yuki, we went to Tofino and oh my goodness, anyone listening to this podcast or watching the video that's been to Tofino will just completely know what we are talking about. But I'm so glad that we did this trip and we went there. Tofino has been a bucket list destination for me that I never thought I would have the opportunity or chance to go to, but I'm, I'm so glad that we did. It was like, Me- it felt like Mexico. It felt like you were in a different country. It was, it was unreal. And we, unfortunately we didn't go surfing, which I feel like we're going to get hate for because you just <laughs> have to go surfing if you go there. And I do agree. Why didn't we go surfing? Because we have our babies with us, exactly. which I don't think we've mentioned yet, but no. we have Hera, Steve's dog, and of course Tucker with us. And I personally just didn't feel comfortable with leaving them in the van and us going surfing when this is this trip is about all of us that just would have been a long time with them just like stuck in the van and and they're our babies so they come everywhere with us they're our shadows so yeah we didn't we didn't go surfing so before we went to tofino and we were doing some research of where we were going to stay because ideally we didn't want to pay anywhere to stay but we knew that was that, the goal yeah that was the goal but at some point we knew that we would have to we were told by everyone i do have friends that live on the island we have friends that have been to the island and they did say you will not find parking anywhere overnight parking in tofino yeah anywhere overnight free parking in tofino and the reason being that i was told from people that actually live there is that van lifers before me when it was a little bit more van life friendly there kind of ruined it for everyone because they would go there in their van sleep somewhere trash wherever they slept and being that Tofino is quite small, the locals obviously did not appreciate that. So because of the conditions that previous people treated the island in that area, uh, it's very much not van life friendly. Like obviously as humans, we are welcome there, but we are not welcome there to stay anywhere we want overnight. So your options really are to stay completely out of Tofino or to get a campsite, which... Just for security, we chose the campsite because we didn't know the island. We didn't want to get there in the middle of Labor Day long weekend-ish and not have a place to stay. Yeah, the security of the guarantee. I definitely wanted that guarantee place where we could sleep. And honestly, I'm so grateful that we did because it was so nice. We, when you actually book, so there was Surf Grove campground is where we stayed and their minimum that you can book for is three nights. The other one is called coast um mm-hmm. it was like costa bella or something i'll put it in the in the link because those two are like the most popular i'm glad that we did that because it was so nice to stay in one place for three days and we weren't constantly having to like see where we're going to stay next it was just a guarantee and the camp site that we had was beautiful it was the perfect lot for a van and dogs and tons of space and we were surrounded by trees and then we were walking distance from cox bay beach yeah which was beautiful and very close to Long Beach as well. So it was it was pricey, but I'm glad that we did it. I do not regret it. Most expensive camping ever. Ever. But it was well worth it. Do you want to say how much it was? It was f- 500 for three nights. Yeah. And I honestly feel like that might have just been because of... Like peak season? Peak season. You also want to book it at least two weeks 
ahead of time and we did not do that so it may have been that it was just like really booked up we booked probably maybe a week i would say yeah, week, beforehand week so that could have been why but i do not regret it at all it was it was beautiful um you brought up cox bay so long beach is what everybody like if you're going into fino you go to long beach you go to long beach for the sunset and the surfing we only really got one day maybe two days of sun when yeah. we went there and we were not surfing so i'll let you continue because i know where you're going with this <laughs> well for us when we got to long beach yes it's beautiful yes i can appreciate probably the sunsets are beautiful but it wasn't dog friendly dogs had to be on a leash mm -hmm. Uh, we wanted to fly the drone. It was a provincial park or a national park, so you couldn't fly the drone. Uh, so Cox Bay, just as beautiful, seemed to be just as good at surfing. And dogs can be off leash. And we got to fly the drone. We got some sick footage. So I think it was, like, for me, Cox Bay was the better of the two destinations. Yeah, I think comparing the two, Long Beach was beautiful for the sunset, and I can see why. Those pictures are beautiful. Like, it's it's just an unreal experience to be on Long Beach when the sun is setting. It's um, breathtaking. The, the huge disadvantage for us is that dogs have to be on the leash. Although I'm sure people don't, we, we just chose to follow the rules, there I guess. There wasn't but a single off-leash dog that we saw, though. There wasn't. And Hera just, like, doesn't like being on the leash. Well, yeah, she's, she's a, a free better, spirit. She's a better off-leash dog. Yeah. And then, of course, we did, we, we did want to fly the drone and get some get some beautiful footage there too so long beach was beautiful for the sunset I, i'm so glad that we enjoyed the the walk of that beach and that but for the dog's sake and our creative side sake we didn't quite enjoy it as much as cox bay and cox bay is literally walking distance from where we were sleeping so that was a huge convenient because convenience factor. yeah because we didn't have to drive 10 minutes down the road it was right there and the only sign that was really on that beach was no campfire so dogs could be off leash um we got to fly the drone we could pretty much do anything except for have a fire yeah. so yeah that was nice we got at least one day of a beach day with the with the sun so it was really nice and how did uh, running into the ocean feel it was beautiful it was freezing but i wanted to mention that the obviously the water and we went at like the end of summer yeah like it is september so of course it is going to be Colder in general. Anybody June, in the water was June, in a July, full, August. full wetsuit, like including a headpiece. Yeah, so. that's what I, they weren't wearing headpieces. Yeah, they were. They were just a little, little round circle face was oh, showing. I didn't see that, but that's yeah. okay. But yeah, that's what I was gonna mention was that everybody was wearing a wetsuit because the water is freezing. But we did say prior to actually going there that we were. I said before the trip that I was gonna go swimming every day, and I was so excited to swim every day and like bathe in mother earth's water and oh, i didn't do any of that because it was freezing <laughs> but i did we both kind of convinced YOLO'd. each other yoloed it um and ran into the pacific Except. ocean and dived in and said we got wet so it was very cold and i can understand why everyone was wearing a wetsuit the other thing that i can appreciate actually because i love the water is that it, it be it's beach day every day in tofino yeah whether it was raining sunny and beautiful or raining and gray people were in the water surfing and mm. i i do appreciate that i love that being that i do love the water yeah. uh yeah i i definitely will go back to tofino it was it was a great little community it was beautiful uh, the drive is amazing it's a tight road covered by a bunch of trees yeah sharp turns and steep hills yeah, and I'm actually going to like mention that if if you are driving to Tofino for the first time, the the street is very windy, it's very curvy and there are signs that say slow. I just recommend to not be naive to that because if you aren't going slow enough, I could understand why accidents could happen. Yep. Maybe potential death could happen because some of those corners are pretty steep. They're they're like pin pin hair turns. Yeah, especially if you're in a van or something of a heavier vehicle i would yeah. say like drive with caution especially at night because being there's... being from alberta when they say you know 50 kilometers you can drive 60 or 70 and, and take a turn no problem yeah. but when it says 30 in tofino you take it at 20 yeah absolutely but yeah overall it was it was a great trip um highly recommend taking the drive to tofino it was it was yeah it was amazing now just a touch on going from obviously steve and i are together just over a year now mm -hmm. we don't live together i live um well i live in the van but i reside at my mom's house also and then he lives at his condo so going from not living together to living together for just over two weeks in the van and two dogs 
It was a learning experience. Yeah, we'll talk about that experience. <laughs> the biggest thing is just understanding and granting each other and giving each other the space and time each day to do your own thing. Whether it's a half hour of your own time and space or more, it's just nice to have that reset. And I think we realized that halfway through the trip. Because for the first five or seven days, 24 hours a day, we were side by side. And there was just, you're working in a very small space. The kitchen and the kitchen sink are a f- half a foot apart, you know? Yeah, it was There's just not like, a lot of space to move around It was here. just navigating the space. And I wouldn't say by any means, like, yes, we felt the small quarters, but I don't feel any negative, like, nope. negative energy towards it. But it's definitely something that you have to consider beforehand that you will be spending 24 hours together in a very small space and then we have two dogs and we have a big dog and then we have a small dog so just navigating the cleanliness and everything it's it definitely is a learning experience communication is huge what i took away is that communication is huge and i 100 percent agree with your comment about taking your own space which i felt like i didn't do enough of and we kind of realized that through the end of the trip um because i personally felt not guilty, but like, like we were here together. We were on this trip together and I didn't take the time and space that I felt like I needed or we both co- probably could have used mm-hmm. because I knew that we were on this trip together. And we're two very extremely independent people cohabitating in a very small space. Yeah. And like, obviously weeks. we love our, sp- well, we love being together. Um, hence why we are on this trip together, but we also very much like our own space. And I yeah. think not just when you're traveling, but every day, all day for the rest of your life, you, everyone needs their time and everyone needs their space. And it's so incredibly important to take that. So if I could do it again or or when we do it again or recommend it to someone who is wanting to rent a van and go somewhere with your significant other kids, dogs, pets, take that time that you that you need. To give a shout out to your van design for a second, the, the way that you design the space creates four distinct rooms. The cabin up front is the driving space and our office. Um, then you've got the kitchen space and kind of like the, the sink cleaning space, the bedroom. And then when the rear doors are open and the rear tables pulled out, that's our dining room. And the more you utilize those spaces, the less tight this space actually feels. Yeah. And I appreciate the pocket wall with the door that I have to separate the two because yeah. when the doors close, like you can't hear anything. It's, it's very well, we very well built. built. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you need your space, you definitely have that. But overall, I think it was, it was a cool experience to travel all of us together and navigating the dogs and stuff because it adds another responsibility and Hera is a lab retriever so she's not tiny but she's not huge mind you but and she also sleeps she's She's currently currently, twitching she's dreaming look at her she's smiling (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so navigating the dogs and stuff it was just like it was an experience for sure uh overall an amazing trip we had tons of fun and I think aside from the fun and everything we definitely learned a little bit more about each other learned about like what it's like to travel and what we need like I we probably wouldn't have known how important taking our own space is until we got here and I feel like I learned a lot about myself because I like things to be particular and have things in places and I can be a little bit rigid sometimes but it's learning to just like flow and like allow whatever is to be is as it is and Just being on the road in general, personally for myself, I think I'm going to learn a lot about myself and learn about what really matters and what doesn't and what can wait. And just to kind of to uh, appreciate and and recognize the transition you've made through the course of the trip. I'm a guy. I could sometimes put things in the wrong spot or not think about things before I do it and realize after the fact that, hey, I probably could have done that differently. At the beginning of the trip, some of those things really seem to bother you but by the end of the trip I can even notice that somehow my socks ended up in the sink this morning I don't know I don't remember putting them there I'm not even going to talk about your feet on the podcast I'm not going to talk about other things but (laughs) (laughs) um I just I appreciate the fact that you have been more open-minded to being a little bit more loose and less rigid it's a learning experience it's it comes with yeah perfectionism is a real thing and it's not always a good thing something that you have to work on if you are a perfectionist unknowingly 
and a year or two years ago I would not have said I'm a perfectionist until I learned about myself and I was like damn shit I'm a perfectionist and it's it's yeah it's something that you definitely want to work through to manage because it can it can take a lot out of you and having expectations for things the way that you want them to play out and sometimes the way they play out is the way they're meant to play out but it's not how you envisioned it and that doesn't make that wrong there's yeah. still some things that need to be done with the van when we get home and yeah you know before you can go on the road again and that's not a bad thing that's just part of the van life yeah just so. part of the process is what it is that was pretty much it some of the other points that we wanted to mention was wi-fi spots we kind of did already with the gym obviously cafes in smaller areas will have wi-fi with the pandemic it does make a little bit of a difference of where you can sit where you can't sit where wi-fi is going to be good and where it isn't but the one place Let's give a massive shout out that surprised me was co-op any co-op so co-op hardware co-op foods they have a co-op guest is wi-fi it any co-op any co-op we tried we three at, different ones we were at the gas station and the grocery store gas station grocery store as well as a hardware store where did we go to a hardware store um remember the first one we parked and we walked across the street and we told the guys say hey, we're not going to this one we're going to the other one i pulled uh, up wi-fi there too i guess it is the same company yeah. same company but their so, guest wi-fi is amazing yeah i was trying to upload my latest youtube video and i was on the gym wi-fi and this particular gym's wi-fi was like super super slow so then we went to Tim Hortons, which Timmy's also usually has pretty decent Wi-Fi. I have been in the States and pulled up in my car and connected to the Tim Hortons or even McDonald's Wi-Fi, and it usually works pretty good. But this particular Tim Hortons, I think we were in Nanaimo, was like not working. So then I, and I was trying to upload this video for three days using like trying to navigate different wi-fis and then we connected to it was like at 66 percent we connected to co-ops wi-fi and it went from 66 to 100 in like three minutes not even it was like it was like a minute and a half like it was so quick so that was great for me to learn especially when i am Just you know on the road by myself and i need wi-fi and I, obviously i'm gonna need to work and i do co-op wi-fi is like where it's at 100 percent. it was so great i was so shocked and i had no idea so that was definitely a huge learning learning thing for me but overall one of the things we wanted to do was try out vegan restaurants cactus club is in Kelowna has kind of always been one of our favorite places um, mm -hmm. for many reasons, but they do have a decent uh, vegan item menu. Yep. So we had that a couple times. Different places that we enjoyed was Rhino Coffee, coffee House yep. in Tofino. They have, you will, when you go to Tofino and you look up coffee, they will be the number one that stands out because everyone will tell you to go there. But Rhino Coffee House is famous for their donuts. They only had one vegan option, but they are famous for their donuts and their coffee was amazing. Dirty Chai is where it's at for us and they had an amazing Dirty Chai, so we were really happy with that. Um, the other vegan place that was in Tofino was, what's it called? Bravocados. Bravocados. Bravo Again, probably a really popular place if you were to to look up restaurants or ask mm -hmm. the locals they would probably tell you to go there but vegan onion rings it was fully fully vegan fully yeah vegan. it was fully vegan it was so so good i would definitely i would yeah definitely go there again yeah. for sure very healthy selections um, and then we stay or we went to really vancouver and uh, yale town we went to meet m-e-e-t yeah oh we didn't talk about that so after tofino being our destination we went to go visit my dad who's currently for the next couple months in Vancouver because he's there and he's working. Um, they wanted to be located somewhere where it was walking distance from pretty much everything that they needed. So they are in the heart of Vancouver. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe we haven't talked about this yet. They're in the heart of Vancouver. And let me tell you, if you live in a van, the heart of Vancouver is not van friendly. <laughs> like you cannot park for free anywhere. Not that I was really expecting to, but it's just, it. it's not, parking wise, it's not friendly, but driving wise, it was overwhelming. That city is so incredibly busy, but this is also coming from a girl who isn't a huge fan of very large chaotic cities i'm much better in the wilderness and just consider our state of minds we just left tofino of two thousand people and a chill atmosphere yeah and we were in downtown the heart of vancouver yeah can we tell the jaywalking story yeah we will tell that story <laughs> but just that's a good point we went from more our vibe in tofino slow to Vancouver, which Vancouver City is is beautiful. I enjoyed being there, 
but I could never live there. Driving the van there was, was so overwhelming. I felt out of place when we got there, but when it came to parking, we navigated. We had to move the car every three hours because the max parking limit was three hours, and then... You couldn't feed the meter, so you had to change meters. Yeah, you couldn't pay the, on the same meter, so we had to find different meters, and then when it came to overnight, because we did want to stay with my dad, when you pay at only specific meters after six o'clock, you had it for the next 14 hours, so from after six until 9 a.m. you were allowed to park, but then at 9 a.m. you had to move again, so it was just like inconvenient convenient overall, but I wouldn't have changed anything because I got to spend time with my family. But when we were there, we did stay at a fully vegan, or we did, sorry, go to a fully vegan restaurant. It was called Meat, M-E-E-T, and it was amazing. Yeah. So good. Yale Town, you said? Uh, I was in Yale Town, yeah. Yeah. Yale Town is really good. Okay. The jaywalking, jaywalking story. story. This was like my fault, but it's kind of funny at the end of the day. Just, again, just left the island. We hadn't showered for a couple days. We're running out of clean clothes. Running, we were out of clean clothes. Well, you were. You, your outfit was pretty questionable. <laughs> I was not out of clean clothes, but I knew that when we went to go see my dad that we were going to be able to do laundry. So we we are now from Tofino into Vancouver. You were wearing moccasins, sweatpants, a long-sleeved Blue Jays, or what was it? No. What was the t-shirt? It was, or I don't what? know, tr- I don't know, Toronto something. something. Raptors. Raptors. I don't know. Hair the- in a bun and the point is i looked homeless okay i looked dirty i looked homeless i had a side like a backpack on the side of my shoulder like i did not look good we wanted to while we were waiting for my my family to get off work and get to their condo so that we could be welcomed in and do laundry etc we went to an anytime fitness there one that was downtown parked on the road we're going to the gym to work out and shower but I was kind of just like in this like, I don't live here. This is chaos. I'm overwhelmed. Just get me in the shower. I want to go for a run to like mentally clear my head and let's just get into the gym. That we parked on the side of the road downtown. Remember that I look homeless and I was just going to jaywalk it because the gym is right in front of me. I don't want to walk down to the thing. I'm just going to go. So I just went and at first it was great, but then I kind of like hopped over a medium to continue to go over the side of the road and this car like slammed his brakes on because I was jaywalking and if he didn't slam his brakes, he probably would hit me because I didn't see him either. And I look over at this nice man who just slammed his brakes and it was a police officer. And I was like... I was waiting for the siren. I was just uh, like walking, walking. The lights walking. to go on. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, please don't. I just got a $300 ticket elsewhere. Like, I don't need this right now. And I know it was my fault. It was my stupidity. Call me out. I'm calling myself out. I'm very aware that what I did was not the right choice. But my theory here to why he did not stop me, aside from that fact that he probably had something more important to do, was that I looked so bad that he was like, you know what, this girl probably can't afford a ticket. (laughs) So I'm just going to let her keep going. (laughs) That he didn't stop me. No lights went on. No sirens went on. I did not get a ticket for jaywalking. And then we went and had a shower. And then we went into the gym. I went for a run and we had a nice shower and it was great. And then I was on the treadmill going for my run, just like looking out the big window. I, I like to usually treadmills are by a window so it was nice because I could see the van but I look up ahead of me and realize that the police station is right in front of the gym yeah right in front of us so it makes sense why the police officer was there I'm so lucky and so grateful thank you Mr. Police Officer for not stopping me when I was jaywalking and being illegal yeah I love it. So that was that experience. I had a question a couple questions for you any moments with Tucker on the trip that kind of were stand out as highlights or like bonding moments that you you two shared i'm excited to be in this van with him because i think that we are going to create or create a bigger relationship and bonding experiences i love that he loves this van Mm -hmm. that is so important for me and it was something that went through my mind of like you know what happens if i put all this money into my dream of living in a van and he doesn't like it but he loves it Mm -hmm. he has co-pilot he can walk on the counters i don't care if people think that's gross like this home is his home just as much as it is mine and he absolutely loves it and that made me so happy and just kind of reassured things that like we are meant to be in here 100%. so on the trip i think the big one of the biggest things that stood out to me when it was like that bonding moment was when we had a little bit of a bit of a beach day on cox bay beach and me and him he was off leash and he came with me and we just 
ran and walked the beach Mm -hmm. and we did it together and he was living his best life and we kind of walked from one end and then ran the other end and um that was huge for me because usually sometimes if he's out and it's too busy crazy he gets a little bit nervous and just wants to be in his safety net at home but he came with me and it was it was awesome to be on the beach with him and it was beautiful and pretty and just seeing him also swim in the ocean water because he's not a water dog but he'll go in up into his belly but his feet are like his legs are like two and a half inches tall (laughs) so it doesn't take long before his belly hits the water but there were times where he went in and he was swimming and again living his best life so those are probably highlight moments for me and and yeah just sleeping sleeping with us in the bed and curling up under the covers because at home he doesn't always do that but it's like that comfort of him being under the covers to me up against my belly next question or i guess my last question here is looking back at your state of mind and who you were before this trip and now going home today has anything changed has has there been any shifts um i think i'm gonna learn more about this when i'm further and further on in the road but past two weeks I think I definitely again the perfectionism in me had an expectation of what it would be like on the road I like to say that I am a free spirit in a lot of ways but I learned very quickly being on this trip with you and for the first time really in the van going so as far as we did that I do have a little bit of rigidity in me and and it's something I, I don't want to just accept as who I am because it takes the fun out of it and you have to have some form of expectation of how your day is going to go, but be open to absolutely everything and the possibilities. So that was something that I definitely learned for myself was that I felt emotion within myself that I was not expecting to feel. Mm -hmm. I was ready to like go on this trip and like have this like big sigh of relief of like, oh, we did it. Like the van is done. We're, We're on the trip we've been waiting for for months and months and months and have that like euphoria moment. that like moment yeah. and yes we had that moment at times but i didn't get that like expected like all the weight is off my shoulders kind of moment because mm-hmm. i don't know that's honestly my I'm, my brain's always going mm-hmm. you know like it's it, that's not really who i am but that's where it comes back to for me journaling is my form of meditation and finding that time for myself is really important and I have to do that Mm -hmm. and when I don't do that I feel it and that's definitely something that I noticed this trip and the rest of it is just like being okay with that the van is going to get scuffed it's going to get bumps and bruises being that this is my home I chose to paint these walls white and I have to expect that they're not (laughs) going to be white for the rest of my life living in this van and I will say again this is going to be something that I probably experience more so when I'm by myself or when I'm just it's just Tucker and I but having the expectations of van life isn't everything you see on the beautiful things on Instagram which everyone says but it's true it 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 comes with the challenges of the unexpected battery was unexpected the the stove of what we were going to use to eat and cook with was unexpected yeah just things like that I yeah. think we're, we're, we're huge. Or even for last sure. night, I thought we had the most perfect <laughs> camping spot picked out and we ended up traveling another three hours because we just didn't vibe with it. Yeah. You know, like there's going to always be unexpected and you have to roll with that. Yeah, you do, especially that because, well, for us, oh, there was a lot of times we would go to our destin- our sleeping destination to realize that we cannot sleep here. Yeah. Whether we weren't allowed, there was no room. It just like made us feel uncomfortable, whatever the case was you have to be open to just being like, okay, we're, we're picking up, we're packing up yep. and we're on the road and we're going to drive three more hours to, <laughs> to get to where the next place we have, which yeah, if you have a place in mind, always have a plan B or a plan C of what if the first one doesn't work out just so that you have options for sure. Mm-hmm. But no, overall, I think this is just the beginning from myself. Um, I learned a ton about myself on this trip. I'm looking forward to, you know, being with my family for the next month at least before I get back on the road and while it's it's getting the last few touches done to it. But I'm excited for the journey ahead and, and I'm glad that we got to do this trip together going as far as we did because it was quite far. Mm-hmm. And for me to drive the distance for the most part and navigate everything for the first time and have Steve with me. It was just that extra level of comfort and support if I needed it. And kind of to prove to myself that I can do this. I can do this. I can drive the distance. I'm going to be okay. I can figure it out. And of course I would do that no matter what if I was by myself, but it was always nice to 
to have you there. So we live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Yeah. And being able to see BC through the driver's seat in your van, not in a hotel, not in a campsite, experience areas of the province that no one's really, many people haven't been to. Yeah. Uh, was very cool. And I was just happy to do it with you. Yeah. It was really great. It was a good trip. Now we are closing out the episode. We are going to drive the next hour and two hours and 40 minutes home back to Edmonton to shower and shave shower and shave <laughs> and all and have a bath it's good and eat food that's warm it's gonna be great so thank you so much to absolutely everyone for tuning into the episode today hopefully you took something away from it um if you have any questions please feel free to comment below or send us a message on Instagram. We did write down all the places we stayed, places that we ate at that we loved. Um, so we do have quite a bit of information going from Edmonton to Vancouver Island. If you do want to uh, have any insight on that, if you're heading that way, but thank you for tuning in and we will see you in the next episode. Bye.